Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, I would like to welcome you all to the tech session conducted by Synopsis Sri Lanka to the university students of Katalar Defense University. First, uh, let me give you a brief introduction about Synopsis Sri Lanka. Uh, and yeah, Synopsis is considered as the leading EDA company in the world, and our tools are dominating in almost all the stages in ASIC flow. Uh, apart from that, Synopsys has also excelled in IP and software security sectors. So as a company, we thoroughly believe that it's really important to share our knowledge with our future generations. Uh, with that being said, now let me give you a brief summary of what we have planned for the session today. In the first half, uh, we will have an introduction to Synopsys followed by an introduction to EDA in the second half. So I, I would like you to feel free to post your questions to the link posted in the chat so that we can answer them during the Q&A session towards the end. Uh, so next, uh, I would like to call upon our first speaker for today, Vetriniam Khadir Kamalan. Kamalan is a senior manager in applications engineering, leading the system design group in Sri Lanka. He has almost uh, 15 years plus experience in semiconductor and EDA industry. He is one of the key engineers in starting a Trenta ED operations in Sri Lanka, which paved the way for synopsis to have a footprint in Sri Lanka. Over Thank to you, Kamala. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, it is a great pleasure to be speaking to you all today. Uh, let me share my screen. I hope you can see my screen. Okay. Yes, so we can see. Okay. Okay, so uh, today uh, we have, uh, I have with me a team from Synopsys. Uh, I'm Vedanim Kadar Kamalan. I lead uh, the, syst uh, the uh, system design group in uh, Sri Lanka. In, uh, I have uh, with me Sandun Ratnayaka, who uh, is one of our lead uh, uh, leaders in the site and he will do the next session. And we have Ravishan, who uh, is a HR uh, recruiter. And uh, we have Manushi, one of our engineers uh, in the field. Um, uh, so uh, let me go to the presentation. So uh, we are here to talk about uh, an introduction to Synopsys and uh, where we are in Synopsys, that is electronic design automation. So, so let me uh, take you back to the motivation. Uh, how you see uh, over the years, uh, how smartphones have become smaller, but smarter. Uh, you have noticed that uh, the circuit boards uh, which are inside the smartphones also are becoming smaller. Have you ever thought what main driving force behind this is the integrated circuit or the IC? Here you can see here you can see uh, uh, the growth of the different uh, ICs over the years from 2000 to 2020. Uh, I, we picked up a few of the well-known uh, uh, processors uh, in different areas. So we have the Intel Pentium 4s, uh, which had a transistor count of uh, 400 million um, transistors, and that was in 2000. And when you see the area that it used to take was also uh, relatively small. 
Now, as you see over the years, the amount of transistors that have uh, that have been in an IC have increased drastically. You now have the um, Apple M1, which has 16 million, 16,000 million transistors. And uh, its area, when you when the size of it, when you see it, it's uh, smaller than the Pentium 4, which had only 42 million transistors. So how is this possible? This, uh, uh, to design such complex circuits with billions of transistors uh, is not done by hand or it cannot be done manually. It requires a complete ecosystem, a complete industry, and that is the electronic design automation industry. Uh, let me go a little bit further. Now, uh, you have your typical programming languages, C++, Java. I'm sure that many of you have used them. What happens uh, when you write the program and then process it? You have means um, available to process them. You have uh, lexical analyzers, syntax analyzers, semantics analyzers. You have intermediate code generators, uh, code optimizers, and machine code generators. So this is the typical flow that you do, uh, that you uh, use or follow to run a normal software. Um, and then finally, it runs on your uh, processors, the Intels or AMDs. Now, if you take an analogy to the EDA, uh, electronic design automation industry, we have something called uh, hardware description languages. Uh, they are mainly Verilog, System Verilog, and BHDL. They are similar in terms of uh, the software languages that you are familiar with, but uh, they are used to define the functionality of the hardware, the IC, that you are intending to fabricate. So again, it's a software which you write, and then it requires a similar processing uh, set of tools to process that uh, software code. So here you have the lexical analyzers, the syntax analyzers, semantic analyzers, similar to your normal software. But then you have logic conversion and logic mapping because finally you're going to have a digital circuit. You need to convert these functionalities into actual gates and logical entities, which can then be created on an IC, on the wafer, which then becomes your IC. So you have uh, steps like logic, logic conversion, logic uh, mapping, logic optimization, placing and routing, and GDS2 generator. So GDS2 generator, GDS2 is the uh, package that is created and then given to the fabrication. Uh, fabrication industry to fabricate. So uh, to do all this work, you need Synopsys as a company, an EDA company takes has tools which um, cater to all these processes, all these steps in the IC design flow or AC design flow. So what else do uh, these uh, tools in uh, a typical software do. They do link checking, they will do memory checking to make sure that there are no leaks, and then they enable you to debug when it doesn't run properly. Now, on the EDA side, we do link checking, but now you also understand that this is a digital design, it's a function, it's, a, it's, it's going to be a digital IC, uh, design. So you have the ability to simulate it before you fabricate it. So there is simulation, there is functional verification, and then there is, of course, debugging. And there's also prototyping. Prototyping is typically, since this end is actually a hardware, 
what you do is you you take this uh, hardware description language um, program or a design and then put it onto a programmable hardware entity where you can test it running it on actual hardware to see how it runs or how it will be when you have actually fabricated it. So all these uh, steps again require uh, tools which Synopsys supports. And those tools together, all of them together form the electronic design automation uh, suit. Let's go. So let's go a little bit more further into this. So electronic design automation, also referred to as electronic uh, uh, computer aided design, is a category of software tools for designing electronic systems. So EDA software tools will automate uh, circuit design processes that also that are too complex to do manually, as I mentioned previously. We also, the verification side of these tools also enable to ensure that uh, the chip designs are optimal, error-free and compact, and they are working as intended. So simply put, EDA is where electronics begin, where you need these tools nowadays with those billions of transistors to be able to design or manufacture a chip. And I will go a bit further into the ecosystem. Now, uh, as you know, every day, uh, whether you are an infant, uh, newly born, or a person in the later years of your life in an ICU, uh, electronics and automation are all around you. It impacts you in every way. Uh, you have automotive in the automotive industry. You have so much of electronics now coming in with the self-driving concepts. You have cloud infrastructure. You have data centers and networks, and then the whole smartphone, smart home, and digitalization of home. There's a lot of remote learning, which is all enabled through electronics. Then the military and aerospace is extremely dependent on electronics uh, designs and the whole internet of things for automation uh, of uh, industries, agriculture, and of course, your typical mobile phone. You, electronics and the ICs impact our lives everywhere. And we are very much dependent on them. And uh, EDA uh, is where it all starts. Okay. This uh, gives you a, a better view of where this industry is and what is the uh, role that we play in this industry. So uh, we have we have EDA in um, uh, this is electronic design automation. And then we have the semiconductors, which enable the semiconductors, which are the ICs. And uh, then you have electronic products, the uh, electronic appliances that uh, typically uh, you all use and we all impact. It. So they cover the many areas that I mentioned previously. Let us look at some of the well-known brands we have in the electronic space i'm sure you recognize many of uh, these products and uh, i'm sure that we way day to day we do interact with some of the products from these brands and then uh, the semiconductors that is the ic uh, who cater to making of these electronic products we, who enable these electronic products we have again some famous names like intel samsung um, toshiba micron so you can see quite a lot of them and then the 
uh, electronic design and automation industry, which enables the semiconductor industry to actually design and uh, give uh, manufacture chips error free and in quick time. So we synopsis are the leaders in this industry and we have uh, certain uh, 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 other A players also in this space. A view of synopsis. So uh, we are um, the for the last FY uh, twenty one, our revenue was four point two billion uh, US dollars. We have employees more. We have grown uh, to more than sixteen thousand employees world over. We have filed uh, three thousand four hundred and nine. 449 patents and counting. And we have offices, we have 125 offices spread across 30 plus countries all over the world. And uh, you can see uh, some of uh, the locations uh, where we are, some of the major locations where we are. And Sri Lanka comes in the Southeast, uh, the South Asian uh, uh, location. So we are the leaders in uh, the number one electronic design automation tools and services company. We have a broad IP portfolio and uh, number one in interface, a foundation and physical IP. So IPs are basically, uh, uh, again, designs, uh, IP, uh, IC designs, which are typically targeted for uh, using to integrate into, to build up your SOCs. So you have many uh, reusable uh, generic IPs, uh, which can be bought. It's kind of like, you know, you can think of it like off the shelf plug and play, which you then integrate your SOC uh, to create your SOC. So we have a, a, a broad uh, IP portfolio also. And in the software space, we uh, we also went into the software space a few years ago, and we are a leader in uh, the GAN uh, uh, Magic Quadrant for application uh, security testing. And our revenue, as you have seen, as you can see, has grown year on year steadily and uh, we are uh, right now uh, very excited about this year also to be um, shooting for 5 billion uh, at the end of uh, this uh, FY22. Many of the com companies are defined by uh, the culture and the leadership at the top. RDGS is our chairman and co-CEO. He is also the founder. So uh, right, it's his uh, right from inception. So he has uh, been uh, the synopsis leader. Uh, and he has, uh, he's a well-respected and well-known person in this industry. Some of uh, the few things uh, mentioned here, Electro Electronic Business Magazine was chosen, has chosen Dr. DJS as one of the 10 most influential executives. Uh, he was honored for pioneering the commercial logic synthesis market uh, by being named the third recipient ever to receive the IEEE Circuits and uh, System Society Industrial Pioneer Award in 2002. Uh, shortly after transacting the largest merger in electronic design automation history, Dr. DJS was uh, named CEO of the year by Electronic Design Electronic Business Magazine and in 2002, Entrepreneur of the Year in IT for Northern uh, California by Ernst & Young. Art is also the recipient of the 2008 Phil Fund.
distinguished contributions to EDA and also winner of the 2009 Dr. Morris Chang Exemplary Leadership Award. We are truly um, glad that we have somebody who uh, has an engineer by uh, training who uh, started this company and has led it all the way uh, to now. Uh, and, uh, you know, with a very good vision. This is some of our social presence, uh, typically where you could uh, learn a little bit more about the fun activities and the things that we do. Uh, Facebook uh, is uh, pretty much updated most of the time. Uh, so please feel free to uh, do uh, view them. Uh, I would, uh, I, I went through the presentation and uh, I'd like to now see if I can answer any questions that you might have. Uh, any questions in the chat? So we will be deducting all the questions in the Q&A sessions uh, at the end. Okay, that's fine then. Okay, then uh, thank you for your time. And uh, we at Synopsis are glad that we are able to do the session for you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kamalan, for sharing those valuable insights with us. Uh, now let's uh, move into a short video which gives us a glimpse on synopsis. Manusha, I think the audio is not there for me. Ah, uh, let me check. Is the is yes, it audible now? Now it's okay. Okay. Synopsis is the silicon to software partner for innovative companies developing the electronic products and software applications we rely on every day. As the world's 15th largest software company, Synopsys has a large history of being a global leader in electronic design automation and semiconductor IP, and more recently, a leader in software quality and security testing. 
Synopsis pioneered the commercial application of logic synthesis that has since been adopted by every major semiconductor design company in the world. This technology provided an exponential leap in design productivity without which the complex designs of today would not be possible. Synopsis's success and esteemed reputation within the electronics and software industries are based on the company's values, integrity, execution excellence, leadership and passion. Over the years, the company has broadened its product profile and grown its global presence to provide greater value to its customers. Being the only EDA company in the island, with 275 R&D and application engineers, Synopsis Lanka is greatly responsible for the establishment and the development of VLSI industry in the country. It has constantly collaborated with local universities to build the expertise among the students. Synopsis Lanka's success as a technology-based center of excellence is due to its strong contribution to build some of the most advanced technologies in the world and being named as the Dream Employer of the Year in 2019 reflects its commitment to customers, employees and society. So I hope you all got some sneak peek into what synopsis uh, from this video. And uh, next up, I would like to invite our second speaker for today, Sandun Ratnayaka. Sandun is a graduate from the Department of Electronic and Telecommunications of University of Moratua. He has more than 10 years experience in the EDA industry. Also, he is an expert on static verification products. Over to you, Sandra. Thanks, Manashi, for the introduction. Uh, let me take it. Uh, uh, Okay, uh, hope you can see my screen, which I shared the slide. Uh, I'm going to uh, <clears throat> speak about ADA, uh, covering some, there might be a little bit overlap with uh, my presentation and some of the things common and discussed. I might go a little bit deeper on some of the sub uh, matters. Uh, okay, so we are going to a little bit understand about ADA. Uh, more to understand about synopsis. There, are firstly, uh, I will take some time to. Uh, sorry, I had to step away for a moment. Uh, hope I am audible and uh, you can see me again. Uh, can someone confirm? Uh, yes, and we can see. Okay. okay, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so we will discuss uh, firstly about ecosystem. So I want to get you a uh, good understanding about uh, uh, how, what is EDA, how, what are the other things like how electronic industry is placed like this. So uh, when we talk about this ecosystem, there are six different set of companies uh, play different, different roles. So having an understanding about each six will help us to understand about more deep into EDA. Okay. First, uh, First set of companies we called as uh, 
they are doing ip core developments uh, let me little it might be a uh, little bit new thing to you if you not in this segment so ip means intellectual property so it's like this so uh, this modern chip development it doesn't happen like people don't think about rtl level, uh, transistor level what developers do is they code it they code using a hardware descriptive language so uh, a company can be formed in a way like uh, uh, people uh, code it code particular uh, electronic device related coding and it can it is the syllable model so if we call this as a ip code there can be two different of ips uh, first category we call as soft ip it is a pure uh, something rtl uh, there can be hard ips also uh, when particular this code bring it to a layout level we can call it as a hard ip so uh, there are companies who develop these ips uh, for 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 selling purpose uh, probably these ips are licensed by uh, other big companies okay i can give you one famous example uh, i think uh, if we are, if you are using apple uh, apple devices so apple has uh, processors license from arm uh, this arm is a ip company what they develop is they have this uh, processors uh, in sort of a ip level and apple uh, reuse these ips uh, under some agreement so this is how ip uh, this is working so even uh, a small uh, people with ideas people with uh, little bit lesser facilities but uh, they can start this ip related work then uh, second uh, company said we can tell us eda companies so these are the electronic design automation companies which provide software deal tools for uh, designing industry so like we mentioned like synopsis is one of the biggest company apart from that there are a few other key players uh, siemens uh is one such and cadence is also such a company uh, there are a uh, number of uh, small scale companies also but these three are the most big players okay. then uh, third category wafer fab equipment industry so these are the companies which make machineries for uh, fabrication facilities so it's a very i mean most of the sophisticated one of the most sophisticated uh, machinery getting developed uh, uh, not many companies are there but, but i can name you a few like applied materials tokyo electron asml so these are uh, because of i mean if you are tuned to this domain you know this um, uh, in electronic designs there is a term like what is the technology node like uh, 20 years back it was we can it might be 100 nanometer uh, uh, 50 nanometer like something but now it is going to lower nodes like uh, 2 nanometer like that or beyond uh, even smaller so uh, when scaling down uh, these machineries what needed to develop these electronic devices also getting sophisticated so very special uh, uh, few people able to develop such machineries okay thirdly fabless chip companies so that means uh, uh, fab, fab means fabrication fabrication facilities so there are chip companies which don't have a fabrication facility uh, most of the companies which we know probably fall into this category uh, there are some system companies we can say like apple qualcomm nvidia amazon uh, they were probably previously used some chips be provide, uh, designed by other companies but now they also developing chips what they do is they don't have a fab they use some of the ip cores they develop their particular chip and use the service of a fabrication facility to get it manufactured okay uh, so uh, there can be uh, some fabless companies developing uh, chips for their usage so it uh, apple uh, google amazon such example there might be some fab fabless chip companies developing things for other people usage it can be amd nvidia qualcomm broadcom so their chips used in other uh, i mean broad market other usage also then we can discuss about idm or integrated device manufacturers so these people 
uh, have they do chip development and they have some fabrication facility also in their in house so uh, majorly there are a few categories you can say like in memory memory designing like micron sk hynix uh, they this have they have fabrication facility plus chip development intel one of the key player in the logic they have their own fabrication facilities in analog sector we can name ti analog devices like that uh, finally come to chip foundries so these are the i mean final players so whatever uh, even it's a ipco or a fabulous chip, chip company they have to go to manufacturing facility uh, they are they are they also they are not very uh, there are limited number of fabrication facilities in the world uh, one of the very famous famous one is TSMC Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Corporation if you are tuned into current geopolitical uh, news uh, you can see some uh, tense situation with china and taiwan uh, so still uh, china is a, uh, taiwan is a small uh, island close to uh, china they own the world largest fabrication facility uh, it's a multinational company i mean uh, this funds coming from outside companies uh, so most of the chips which are getting fabulous uh, most of the fabulous chip companies used in, uh, situated in we can say uh, america so they use to get service from uh, tsmc so that's how this i mean geopolitically these things are connected so tsmc is one of the major player uh, samsung also have some foundries i think uh, if you little bit know about a uh, few years back story like even even apple and samsung are fighting uh, competing each other uh, apple phones also uh, their chips also got manufactured by samsung uh, fabrication facilities so that's how these are interconnected so uh, that's what uh, we can little bit uh, uh, get uh, get know about the ecosystem so these six players are ip core developers and there are software tool providers there are hardware manufacturing wafer fabric equipment industry and there are companies who use ip cores and do fabulous chip companies and there are companies who do the chip yeah. development plus yeah. manufacturing which we called as idm and finally manufacturing facilities okay i think uh, you got some understanding about the uh, system then i am again going back to the uh, ed okay so a uh, little bit from the history like ed also not happen i mean something not happened from the day one like earlier in 16 people were uh, engineers were using cad cam kind of uh, techniques to uh, interactively design layouts i mean in that time the focus was there in the transistor level later in 80s uh, some uh, some of these designing companies started to have own software companies to develop some of the tools for their usage so that is the little bit uh, start of the eda concept but uh, difference is each company each design company has their uh, own software team so they, they were focusing on mainly on simulation whatever uh, hardware how it will be they simulate and see late 80s uh, some eda companies arise like with a concept like why each individual uh, designing company needs software tool developer running for them why cannot be a generic uh, company can can provide the tools which can be used by any company so this is the era of eda arising so as i mentioned like three big uh, people like synopsis cadence mentor now siemens so they started operation in this 80s uh synopsis also complete already completed 35 years in the operation uh like that uh, uh if we see the chip designing flow uh there are several stages like this is a uh, kind of simplified uh model each let's say intel qualcomm they different companies have different flows like they decide when to go to next stage like what are the blocking points of for phase stage like but any uh, electronic company has its own flow now this is a simple uh 
uh, so, uh, people don't uh, bother about the transistor level. So they start developing codes using a hardware descriptive language. Then this thing got civil, uh, synthesized to gate level, we called as synthesis. Uh, there will be a few slides to understand these concepts. Then whatever converted to the gate level placed in the layout. So this is the layout design. Finally, uh, layout is checked for various things and get signed off. Finally, it goes to the fi uh, fabrication facility, uh, which we call as fab. Uh, in the each stage, there are several checklists happen. If it fails, it reiterates to the previous stage. So it comes back again. So this is how chip uh, design flow happen. So these reiterations are very costly. So that's how EDA software tools come into place. First thing they do is they, I mean, these problems not, cannot be solved by uh, a human might might sing, sing, uh, single or multiple people. So these EDA tools take that complexity also. Secondly, they there are verification tools which sign off each stage. So nothing missed when go to the next stage. So these are the uh, things done by EDA tools. Uh, little bit about the hardware descriptive languages. There are three types of languages uh, mainly used in uh, industry. Verilog, system Verilog, we saw extension of the Verilog language and VHT. Uh, Verilog is mainly used in the, I mean, Verilog VHDL, even though there are syntax difference, but they are doing the same purpose. So mainly uh, uh, North America, this region prefer Verilog based design. In Europe, we can see VHDL getting much use. So it's a little bit, uh, some geological difference also there, how they used to have like that. So I have put here a small snap of a Verilog code piece. If you have not seen earlier. Uh, if I tell you a little bit like, uh, so in the module header, it say like what are the signals there? Like there is a D pin, clock pin, clear pin, output pin. So this is how it how we model a simple D flip flop behavior. So D flip flop is a uh, you know I think I assume you know about flip flops like smallest digital component, sequential digital component. So it works based on the clock tick. So how what it say like every clock positive edge of the clock check what is the reset condition if it is reset you should reset the output if not capture the d input to the q so this is the d i mean we call this is as the behavioral model like right? uh, we know how, how it, it should work then we code it how it should work so different between from our conventional computer programming language computer programming language there is no parallel working like i mean chips once it once we have it every flip flop uh, every sequential gate every combination of gate work parallel you know so even coding we should think about this parallel behavior so uh, so each uh, parallelly working uh, code segment will be in a unique or less block uh, but in the con uh, conventional computer programming there can be something parallel happening but uh, most of the things happen in sequential like there's a method call return next thing next thing like that but uh, even though it's a kind of a programming language, harder descriptive languages are interpreted in different way. If you are a user or developer, you have to code thinking like you are an electronic designer, not, not a computer program. program. Uh, so some information, I uh, will not go into each detail, but in brief, you should understand like it's uh, in modern electronics, it's not like people bothering about the transistor level abstraction, people code it, translate it, and get things done. Um, then go to the synthesis. Uh, synthesis is like this. Now, I show you some code piece like people type it. So what, what required is people what uh, mean should bring to the gate level representation. That is called as logical synthesis. Okay. We have to bring it to uh, some logical gates or sequential elements. Uh, when doing that, uh, probably I will take this example. Same logic can be uh, can be uh, implemented in different way, like the top circuit and bottom circuit. Logically, exactly same. But first, uh, 
in the whatever in the top it has seven gates so uh, if some signal uh, is uh, changing it has to go of uh, pipeline uh, through seven logic elements so there will be delay of seven items but the bottom one it has more logic elements because we intend to do more pa things parallel but then we reduce the delay now critical path delay is five so synthesis also ha have to cater this factor like if you are focusing on area uh, we will uh, we will lose timing if we focus on uh, timing we will lose area the best thing is we have to focus on best use of both so that's what normally synthesis engines do so people as humans can guide these softwares uh, but nowadays like machine learning also playing a part like let's say like next version of the chip coming it can start from the uh, chip which uh, stopped uh, previous version like previous learning also can be used so a little bit about synthesis and uh, the complexity and uh, technology mapping also one part of the synthesis i can tell like uh, uh, in uh, it, we can tell it like this like uh, a logical descriptive thing we can convert into generic and gate or gate like that but when we go to manufacture he is able to manufacture based on uh, particular they are his availability you know like it's like this so let's say like tsmc like we have some cell library uh, model from him we can say like it's like a catalog like he tell like i have these these uh, like and gates i have this my flip-flops are like this my marks are like this so we get that sort of a understanding catalog we call as a lib file so our software tools which we do synthesis uh, we provide one from one side our hardware descriptive language coded thing other side we can provide the cell library so it can understand okay i need uh, this hdl map, map to and gate okay let's see what are the and gates coming from this vendor so he can do that combination so they can we call this as technology mapping okay so uh, you can see a tsmc here uh, so i mentioned about cell library uh, but uh, uh, when we look practically like it's also a te textual file human readable it has some information if human can read machines also can read a1 b1 Oh, uh, A1, B1 now inputs, output is out open. And input capacitance of A1 pin is this one, B1 pin is this one, like that. So, this is a limited information, but still it has some RC information. Now, if you, I, I guess you have some electronic in the electronic background, like uh, once we know resistors and capacitors, let, this is for one thing. Even though there are million or billion gates, like uh, once if we know the R and C uh, resistance capacitance values, uh, we can uh, model it to a very huge uh, RC circuit, uh, RC circuit maze. We can say like there are millions of billions of gates. So then we can, uh, before manufacturing, we can see like what will be the power consumption, what will be our uh, delays everything we can model because our manufacturer provide us some this sort of catalog then we able to map it to gate level thing and we extract every information and we can create a model so this is a little bit complexity of ed uh, uh, these softwares are not running on personal computer like those are installed in servers uh, multiple users can use it servers like this is little bit understanding about that Okay. Uh, then we uh, in in the synthesis also I we firstly discussed about uh, logical uh, uh, area versus delay thing. Then we talk about technology mapping. Then these engines do some optimizations also. Like for example, if there is a, a logic like this. It can be optimized to exogate. So this sort of uh, logical removing, grouping, these kind of things also can done by the synthesis engine. Okay. 
um, some combining this one is like it realized like uh, probably this output connecting to 20 50 things so apart from having a single drive, driving strength and gate it is ta taking 2x driving strength and gate so it can drive uh, its rc drop will be less so these kind of decisions also make now so far in these three slides we discuss about how logical synthesis happen optimization uh, area versus delay and uh, gate mapping okay uh, now a new topic layout designing uh, if you are a little bit pcb designer you might get more idea like whatever now in the world still we are virtually like nothing nothing physically there is some rtl coding textual things it, it get mapped to gates still it is a virtual somewhere somewhere in a software uh, it comes to layout still virtual somewhere in the software like whatever those millions billions of gates need to place in the layout so a person can cannot do it uh, even let's say 100 to 1000 people also cannot do it so uh, these EDA tools help there uh, but still engineers can guide like probably uh, what people can do is like people can define areas like this module should come to in this area okay this module uh, there are pins connecting to outside world so it should come to the boundary uh, for example like we can mark like this is a ram uh, there will be a lot of connections uh, so don't place any component in the vicinity so we can add some blockages uh, for further to keep allocations for the routing similarly we can do some guided way uh, but still tools can uh, automate the rest okay uh, some of the points i will not go each by i will not read it for you uh, you can see like uh, I think uh, this is another layout sample one like you can see like co-logic is in the middle there are some blocks like uh, special logic elements like RAM another RAM PLL means it's the oscillator like logic and this is the co area so most of the logics will be placed there so it's an open-ended problem so our uh, layout engine can place things uh, in this entire area so it it will look like what are they connected to each other like that so this this is the uh, io pads this this is the uh, input output pins are connected to this area okay uh I can give you another example like this is how we virtually see this placement like uh, there are some horizontal small grids uh, you will not see exactly that is but uh, these logics are placed in a particular row so uh, that's how uh, this concept works so if they are let's say uh, normally they have same height uh, based on the lo uh, logic complexity it get different uh, width so it can be placed in particular grid that's how uh, this thing happened but still these are in virtual okay uh, even before uh, before go to manufacturing everything even though it is in the virtual virtually uh, everything get checked by different uh, rule engines uh, whether any incorrect thing happen so there will be no surprise when it go finally to the manufacturing uh, this is about to understand how routing happened uh, i can i will i should add some more details like in pcb also you know there are multi layer pcbs like uh, uh, components in there some routing in happen one layer another routing like that similarly we discussed about logical components in a real fabrication there are multiple np layers happening so uh, let's say in bottom two three layers it's how our pn junctions uh, get placed and our logics get implemented on top of that we have to do routing so each logic elements has to connect uh, the thing and they are need power uh, voltage uh, vdd vss like uh, positive and ground power need to go everywhere uh, clock signal has to go everywhere so how this happened is like there are multiple layers for routing uh, even in routing there are some principles like uh, it will know like everything will not go here and there there are some layers only do horizontal routing there are some layers only do vertical routing and there are there's a concept called wire points like so 
let's say you have to come like this and go have to go uh, uh, horizontally and vertically it can come to the upper layer or bottom layer using wire points so that's how even connectivity not disturb disturbing other similarly like as i mentioned like logics has to be connected uh, clocks has to be connected power and ground pins has to be connected so it's a huge amount of uh, connectivity so there are i mean there are separate routing engines okay so you would understand like i am using the word engines for different terms like i told synthesis engine i saw i saw uh, place and route engines uh, uh, so these are different different softwares uh, uh, each software provide handoff to the next software so if we go to like synopsis like uh, software companies these companies provide like hundreds of softwares which ex which expertise on particular segment uh, so uh, uh, good thing is like one, hence these software is coming from a same company uh, uh, there is a smooth handoff from one phase to the other phase uh, so users will little bit feel it as seamless so that's how this thing happened but due to this complexity like a single piece of uh, code piece cannot ca handle this uh, complexity even single set of developers cannot do it in a way that's how these things happen so this is another little bit virtual view, like you can see some uh, horizontal and vertical nets there. So this is about how uh, layout after uh, routing seen by a software. Okay. Uh, this is another example of an integrated circuit, uh, kind of real one, uh, some version of Apple. Uh, so you can see like, uh, as I mentioned, like, uh, the modules which has connectivity to outside get connect get placed in vicinity of the uh, border there is a cpu l2 cache l1 cache camera interface some gpu cores sram spll4 um, oscillators those kind of things and rest of the thing entire space for different different logic modules which need to connect so someone probably this might, logic might be connected more need to connect to memory or gpu that's why it's connected here uh, so there's art and some experience uh, play a role here uh, how to do the beta routing okay. uh, so next i will touch upon uh, uh, another segment now we so far we which we called we called as ASIC application specific integrated circuit design. So it normally happen with big companies like they need separate teams uh, to develop the thing and they go to fabricate and get this fabricated. So we cannot do hundred pieces and ask fabricator to do that. Like millions of pieces getting fabricated by fabricator. It's a large scale. But what about small scale? What for university students? What for researchers? So FPGAs are other entry point for this digital designing. We call this as field programmable gate array. The name field programmable means like it's already manufactured. It's a development board. Uh, once we got it, we can put our code there. It get reprogrammed. It get programmed in the field while using those. That's why we call as field programmable gate arrays. So they are, uh, life is much easy. Hardware is, uh, hard is already made. So uh, still people code using hardware descriptive language that logic get converted to some gate level representation which mapping to this uh, FPGA. Normally FPGA vendors provide a software tool also like uh, for Xilinx, one of the major person, a major company uh, now acquired by uh, AMD. Uh, they have this Vivado suit. Uh, so uh, but it, it's a little bit automated, like people don't have to worry about much about place and route tools can do, do that. Uh, still developers can focus mainly on logic part. So this is, uh, FPGAs are very useful for students, uh, researchers to do hardware descriptive language use designing. Uh, it is easy to connect to laptops so desktop, I mean, personal computers. So this is one of the good start point. Uh, you can read the thing. Uh, I can still, uh, meantime, explain some of the thing. Uh, if you are doing trying to do anything, uh, okay. Uh, one more thing, like 
sometimes you uh, you don't need to even go with like very loud VST like STL development. Uh, our MATLAB like softwares also provide plugins to uh, connect with FPGAs. So uh, that sort of facility also they are. Some of the complexities can be handled by MATLAB like tools. Uh, it's very fast. Like I can do for one one. Uh, I can develop few features. Uh, I can program it, uh, reprogram it hundred times. I can do a lot of trial and error things. Uh, so it is very friendly. Like even I was as a uh, student uh, when I'm doing final year project. I used to have FPGAs that paved me to path to join uh, at Trenta at that time. Now synopsis. So if you have real interest, like uh, probably your universities might have even small ones. Like it doesn't cost much. Like you can still buy it a small one for you also if you have really have some interest or passionate there okay uh, so that's what like uh, uh i can uh, i can tell so far like you can subscribe to our synopsis Sri lanka facebook page we have posted some uh i'm sure one some of you participated like we uh till recently we provided some session tech talks for universities there are uh, nine sessions we conducted those nine videos are available still on our facebook page uh, you can uh, have a look there also if you have some interesting uh, that's it from me for now if you have any questions i can take it um, thank you thank you very much Sandun, for the detailed and informative introduction to eda industry Next, to carry on the Q&A session, I would like to call upon Kevini and Yona. Over to you. Thank you, Ms. Manushi. Uh, yes, we have gotten a few questions from the audience, it seems. Um, so let's move on to the Q&A session. Let me start with the first question. Um, what are the challenges and limitations in EDA? Uh, okay, it's a little bit generic question, I think, but still, I mean, uh, one of the challenges uh, I mentioned, like technology is moving. I mean, let's say, like, uh, if you have heard, there's a concept called Moore's Law, like now every uh, 1.8 year. Uh, number of chips in particular area uh, get double. So that's the target people try to drive. So one of the challenges, design complexities are uh, becoming huge. So next version of the software, like high capacity, uh, this also has to come in that pass phase. And now most low also getting break because uh, silicon level, people cannot achieve that much density in previous range. Now, to drive the same thing, uh, EDA tools has to play like probably allocating machine learning, uh, some other technologies. Uh, EDA tools has to fill that efficiency gap also. So these are the uh, these two are the uh, kind of main challenges. Uh, limitations uh, limitations I would say like uh, depending on particular I mean uh, depending on particular. Um, section we are playing there can be different different limitations for example it's if we think about logical simulation now uh, when it become a very large circuit it's not practical to do simulation uh, uh, so there are some other solutions for that for example hardware prototyping emulation technologies come coming even before uh, putting it in on a uh, real hardware there are emulation platforms like zebu in synopsis a mobile phone uh, code uh, chip can be placed on a CPU like emulator and boot Android and see what are the possible things even uh, even before going to uh, manufacturing. So there are limitations, but this limitation paving another path for new uh, innovations also. That's what the answer I can give. Thank you, sir. Uh, on to our next question. What are the job opportunities for electronic and telecommunication engineers in the field of EDA? Okay, um, that's a good question. I can give some understanding. Like, uh, 
if we go to the portfolio like synopsis like uh, companies but we are we are a eda company i will first tell uh, talk about electronic eda eda synopsis opportunity then i will talk, tell about generic also uh, in synopsis we have uh, majorly we can say two pathways as a software company if even you are electronic person and passionate on coding or if you are a software engineer you can join as a research and development engineer uh, like that in synopsis or if you are more into electronic and practical usage you can join as a application engineer uh, you can uh, these people help on application uh, this software testing and usage with our customers uh, these uh, these are the things people do uh, uh, research and development engineering and, and application engineering uh oh if you think our other broader opportunities like if you ever want to i mean our neighbor india also booming uh, so they have uh, i mean in my previous talk uh, previous example i i gave you uh, some insight about tsmc uh, taiwan semiconductor so similarly india is also they have bangalore uh, delhi they have a lot of uh, uh, every major electronic company they have presence there and they are also going on fabrications uh, uh, having uh, fabrication facility development so there will be a definitely boom on uh, in the electronic industry in sri lanka also uh, other thing other small thing i want to highlight if you are fine uh, tune to uh, recent development uh, in us recently so this chips and science uh, act which got introduced so they are putting 50 billion dollar investment to uh, shift uh, electronic fabrication facilities in us so uh, there will be lot of opportunity to our region because uh, india also one of the key player so you can be a fpj developer you can be a hard uh, uh, design engineer there are so many roles in uh, electronic industry but unfortunately sri lanka doesn't have much opportunity but if you go outside like singapore india malaysia anywhere uh, there are immense opportunities there um, we also what uh, with synopsis trying is like we have a silicon uh, valley presence in sri lanka uh, so uh, what we don't know like what come next like but we have taken the first step uh, i hope there will be more opportunities in sri lanka also Yeah, that's what okay, I so, can add to that. Um, yeah. Our next question is, um, what is TGAD? Um, I saw there is a virtual seminar conducted by Synopsis on TGAD. Uh, sorry, I didn't hear that term. Uh, can you repeat? I saw there is a virtual seminar conducted by Synopsis on TGAD. What is TGAD? Okay. Okay. Uh, actually i am i am not very sure uh, probably i not involved but i think this tcad this thing normally used for uh, uh, there are some uh, there are some software tools of another segment um, in my flow i mentioned about uh, uh, rtl synthesis uh, layout and fabrication in this layout and fabrication there are different different sub categories so this t tcad is also one of these sub category as i recall but i am not expert in that area so i will not further comment on that it's also one of the uh, thing uh, close to the fabrication as i recall uh, any further question uh, on to our next question is eda same as pcb designing no uh it's very different i think if you probably that question might be asked earlier also like pcb uh i mean eda uh, okay one of the major difference like uh something to compare is like asic to pcb asic means application specific integrated circuit versus pcb we can say it is little bit likely like pcb is something small ac is something totally different but eda is kind of software tools for this electronic industry you know like it's kind of totally different but uh, pcb also one kind of we can say one version of asic but it's not that much complicated enough it's uh, because uh, other different 
from PCB and ASIC, like ASIC, everything finally come to single chip. So whatever we discussed, uh, let's lay out everything. It's come inside the single chip, but PCB like it's a layout, but different components get added. So uh, there is that difference also in PCB uh, with when we compare to ASIC, but EDA is something totally different. EDA is software uh, enabling this electronic design. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, our next question, I think, can be directed to Mr. Kathir Kamala. Um, what is the difference between ECAD and MCAD software? I didn't get it. Uh, uh, what is the uh, difference between ECAD and MSAD software? ECAD and MSAD. MCAD. Sorry. I'm not sure what that entails. I may be, I may be missing some context here. I'm sorry. I don't seem to be yeah, able uh, to understand. Yeah, yeah. I think something, I also don't know, Kamran, but I think it's related to uh, PCB designing and uh, because we are not focusing there. We, yeah, we are not, we are not together. That's what. Thank you, sir. Uh, our next question is um, when I was searching about EDA and its its uses, I found an area code SLM and there was not many information about it that I can understand. Can you talk about it? Sam, do you want to take that? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't understand that. Um, uh, uh, the question. Could you uh, expand SLM? The question is asking about uh, to explain about SLM. Uh, so I, I don't know. I little bit googled. I think SLM coming into. Uh, I don't know. It's correct. Like. Uh, something related to fabrication i think uh, so it's not directly i mean these are like uh, i think fabrication technologies like post ed when you go to manufacturing i think uh, uh, these technologies i would but it's not coming to eda i don't know probably uh, question answered person might know the thing because he mentioned short term uh, i cannot also uh, confirm it uh, but that's what i understand but it's not ADA, I think. Thank you, sir. Uh, our next question is, how small can an EDA software design and how does EDA make billions and billions of transistor circuits? Okay. Come on, you can okay. will you So how small is uh, EDA software? Uh, I mean, are you asking about the package or? How small can an EDA software design and how does EDA make billions and billions of transistor circuits? Okay, so so this is, uh, so it, uh, uh, so the processing of uh, hardware description languages, right? Uh, it uh, goes through many steps. So uh, when you take how small can an EDA design, I, I think you're asking how small can the, the geography of the, not be uh, probably high is small is a cheap high is mean meaning i mean yeah i i'm not uh, updated on the smallest chip available right now but we work so uh, we work with uh, some of the you know most um, uh, the leading uh, technology nodes in uh, the industry like the intels apples uh, uh, samsung's uh, who are and even TSMCs who are at the leading edge of the node when it comes to size of the transistor. And mm -hmm. typically the size, the junction, the, the uh, size of the transistor uh, dictates how small your chip can be and how much of uh, billions of transistors you can put into it. Mm -hmm. Now, I... Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, you, you come in. So... So, uh, 
So now when you take uh, the pure RTL hardware description language design that you have created and you put it into an EDA tool to process, it first uh, uh, compiles, synthesizes, and then you know it converts it into logical, it maps to logical entities and uh, then uh, goes into interconnecting of those logical entities and gives you something called a netlist. Now, uh, the process from uh, understanding what is written in the RTN uh, by simply passing the language, then uh, like compiling, passing, and then synthesizing it and getting it to the netlist. That is a complete graph or mesh of interconnects and uh, using and having these logical uh, uh, entities like the gates or the flip-flops, latches in that uh, complete graph. This is the process of uh, converting this from, uh, you know, uh, uh, the RTL to the logic mapping. And then you have place and route, and then you go down the thing, and then it goes down to a transistor level. So at GDS2, you have uh, transistor uh, information and the interconnect information. So that is the process by which you go from simple RTL to uh, billions of kids. It gave you a simplicity answer, but I I don't know if that was enough. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have another question. Uh, does EDS predict the expansion of silicon and conductors inside the chips because conductors and silicon has different expansion coefficients? Yes, there, there are. Yeah, please go. Ahead. Yo, I mean, uh, in my side also, I mentioned that. Uh, we get these library characteristics from uh, manufacturers. So we call as this uh, library definition, so uh, lib files. So these have uh, these definitions, I mean, uh, EDA tools don't have to predict this thing. So these, uh, these uh, I showed a small thing for that AND gate. So there I'd say like, what is the area? So what is the capacitance? So these characters are modeled in the, uh, 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 model in these files, even uh, some dimension of, I mean, let's say now finally when it go to manufacturing, uh, there's no, I mean, concept transistor also something virtual, you know, like finally it will be some metal strips, P layers, N layers with some distance. So this information abstract into particular way you in these lib files. So EDA tools understanding that way, but some of these additional complexities are handled by manufacturing facility. So, uh, so whatever these library files and these models provide enough information to the EDA tools to understand and solve the problem. So there is some, uh, we call this uh, some abstraction layer. So then EDA tools don't have to worry about this, uh, how uh, individual metals behave, these complexities we can, uh, in EDA tools or engineers, no need to focus. Uh, this information will be provided by the library models, by the vendor. We have another question. Um, chip is very complicated after manufacturing. How can we determine if the chip design is connected correctly without any errors in integrated circuit design? Okay, so they are also, it's a, I mean, it's a good question. Like, yeah, like how, how to not to be surprised after manufacturing, that's what, no, like, so one thing is, uh, one thing is like I mentioned, like there are a number of software tools. Uh, each stage, it go to next stage after signing off the particular thing. So it makes sure like, let's say, uh, at least logically virtual uh, virtual domain, uh, nothing wrong go happen. But still after manufacturing or during the manufacturing, there can be problems happen. So to have that provision, 
there is a concept called DFT or design for test. So this uh, what it does is uh, it is manufactured in a way after manufacturing uh, these chips can be put on a tester and uh, while sending particular signal each sequence uh, and it can take the output also and decide whether there is a is there any problem in the connectivity or uh, depending on the pattern and the what it got written it can identify uh, is there a wrong thing or where it got wrong so this called as dft or design for testability so chips are manufactured uh, considering this concept so uh, during synthesis layout it is tested whether dft uh, thing is also preserved or there is any no violation there so there are separate tools for that so this complexity is thought uh, how to validate after manufacturing uh, and how to identify where it got wrong. So those two things are thought while manufacturing process. We have not included it in the slide because it's kind of another complexity area, but that thing is there. Thank you, sir. I think we have one last question. Can we use Python, C++ programming languages in EDA? Uh, yeah, so I'm not sure about Python exact using, but C++ like uh, some models can be there, but someone, uh, someone, uh, I mean, I mentioned three main languages, uh, very long system, very long VHDL. Uh, so uh, system, very long, more objective oriented type. Uh, so there are a lot of uh, things people can do. So it's a more little bit uh, uh, more user friendly language. But uh, I can say in this way, like there can be some conversion tools. I mentioned MATLAB also can be used or sometimes. So uh, there can be uh, conversion tools like C++ or Python models get transferred to uh, some other form of uh, hardware descriptive language that can happen. But normally, uh, exactly uh, Python or C++ it's not a mainstream usage. There can be conversion utilities. Come uh, on, you want to add anything? Yeah, maybe I can clarify a little design, right? Uh, what Sandhu mentioned, it rarely is used. Uh, but when you take EDA, the EDA is a software tool. And to develop the software tool, we use, oh, it's purely software, right? So that is, uh, we use a lot of C++ and uh, some python and a lot of tickle also so uh the the two parts right one is the ic design part itself so the ic design part we use hardware description languages but to the tools to process that ic design is eda so software tools that are enabled are eda tools and those tools are just developed as software so they use uh, c++ and yes, thank you, Mr. Sandhan Ratnayaka and Mr. Kati Kamalan. Uh, since our time is running out, we will be concluding the Q&A session from here. Um, let me take this opportunity to thank uh, Synopsis Sri Lanka on behalf of ICPLE Communication Society of KDU for conducting this wonderful session. Uh, Mr. Kati Kamalan, Please accept our digital token of appreciation for making us aware about synopsis. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Sandhanath Nayaka, please accept our token of appreciation for enlightening us with your knowledge. Yeah, thank you, team, for that decision. We are almost at the end of the event, so I kindly invite you all to switch on your cameras to capture a moment of the event.
The photo will be taken after my countdown. One, two, three. Thank you, everyone. Before we wrap up, I invite Kevin Pereira, the Secretary of the ICPRI Communication Society of KDU, to propose the word of thanks. Thank you, Iona. A very good evening to all of you. On behalf of the IEEE Communication Society of General Search, John Kutalavla Defense University, and on my behalf, I would like to my heartfelt gratitude to all of you present here today. My deepest gratitude goes to the speakers and team of experts of Synopsis Sri Lanka, Mr. Kadir Kamalan, Mr. Sandun Ratnayaka, and Ms. Manoshi De Silva for joining us this evening, despite your busy schedules, and for conducting this session thoroughly and smoothly, and for giving us a head start on EDA. A special thank you goes out to Mr. Ravishan Silva from Synopsis Sri Lanka for giving us this valuable opportunity. Moreover, my appreciation goes out to the Dean of Faculty of Engineering, Captain Retired S.U. Dampage, Professor T.L. Viravardana, Head of Departments, Advisors of IEEE KDU, Advisor of IEEE Comsoc KDU, Dr. Sanika Vijay Sekaran. For mentoring and guiding behind the scenes, the Executive Committee. Board of Directors and Grand Success. Last but not least, I thank all the participants who joined us today. I hope all of you got a deep insight into EDA. Do stay tuned for face dated and follow us on our social media. I'm Yona Dagdagal, signing off. for the evening. Thank you and have a good night.